Lesson 5.8, Factoring Linear Expressions. The objective is to use properties of mathematics to factor linear expressions. A monomial, and that's one of your vocabulary words, a monomial is a number, a variable, or a product of a number and one or more variables. So it means that they're multiplied together like this. So if you look at the monomials, they have 25x or 40 times x. So they're all together. There's no addition or subtraction signs between them. They are not monomials if they have those addition signs separating them. To factor a number means to write it as a product of its factors. To factor a number means to write it as a product of its factors. Number one, we're going to review just basic factoring. This is something that you should know how to do by now, um, but we're going to review it just to remind ourselves of how to factor. So we have 4 and 12, and I'm going to do the factoring tree on 1, and then I'm going to list prime factors on 2. So I'm going to factor them a little differently. Actually, I'm going to do the opposite. On 1, I'm going to do 4. My factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4. And my factors of 12 are 1, 2, oh, that's a 3, 4, 6, and 12. And then I look at what are my common factors. And my common factors are 1 and 1, 2 and 2, and 4 and 4. So what's the greatest common factor? The greatest common factor is the 4. So my GCF would be 4. Okay, number two is 48 and 28. And the reason I wanted to do the factor tree for this one is because they're bigger numbers, so it's harder sometimes to memorize those factors. So you take four, and that's when you might use it. It's 48 and 28. And there are so many different factors here. In the end, you're gonna all you're gonna always get to the same prime factors. Um, for 48, I, my instinct is six and eight. Somebody else might have said two and 24, and that would have been okay. Six is two and three. 8 would be 2 and 4, and then 4 can still go further, which is 2 and 2. But none of the others can be factored any further. So that's the prime factors of 48 are 2, 2, 2, 3, and 2. And then 28 is 4 and 7, and then 4 can go 2 and 2. So, oh, so I look at what do they have in common. They have a 2 in common. Actually, I should highlight it. It'll make it more clear. They have a, a 2 in common, they have another 2 in common, and that's it. They don't have a 7 in common, because this one doesn't have a 7. So they have two 2's, so that is a 4, is their GCF. And I get that by taking, oh, that's supposed to be a C. And I get that by taking the 2 times 2 to get their GCF of 4. Okay, now we're adding in variables. This is new information to you. So I'm going to, I just like listing the prime factors. So that's how I'm going to do it. I have 18A and 20AB. And my factors of 18 are 1, or not listing the prime factors, just listing all the factors and then from there finding the GCF. So I have 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. And then I also have an A because that's multiplied in there to get that 18A. Then I have 20AB, I'm going to have 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20, and then I also have an A, and I also have a B. So then I go through and I highlight what's my greatest common factor. My greatest common factor, I have a 2, and that's it. So numerically, my greatest common factor is a 2, and then I also have variables in common, which is to, which is the A. So my GCF of this is 2A. So my greatest common factor is 2A. Okay, four, I'm gonna do this the number tree way so that way you can see how that would be done as well. And I have 12 C D. So I first I'm gonna list all the factors of 12 and then add on the CD. So I have 12 would be 2 and 6, 6 would become 2 and 3, and then I have 
um, C and D down here as well. And then I have 36 CD, and that would become 6 and 6, and that would become 2, 3, 2, 3, and then CD. And then I'm going to highlight. I have a D in common, a C in common, a 3 matches up, a 2 matches up, and another 2 matches up. So this is a lot to multiply together to get our GCF. So our GCF is going to be 2, I'm getting that from this 2, times 2, getting that here, times 3, times C, times D. I got that here. And as you can see, they all have a highlighted partner. They have to have a partner to be multiplied into the GCF. So for the GCF, I take 2 times 2, which is 4, times 3. So my GCF is 12CD. Okay, number 5. I have 3x plus 9. So if you can't um, look at this and tell what your GCF is, you might want to do 3x and 9. And then list your factors, which would be 1, 3, and x. And your factors of 9 would be 3 and 3. And then you highlight what you have in common, which is the 3. And that's it. So you have your GCF is 3. So what we're doing as we factor is kind of, it's almost division. So we are going to like divide a 3 out of this. So we're going to take like divide by 3 divide by 3. So we're going to set it up as 3, which is our GCF. So our GCF will always be right here. This will always be your GCF on the outside. And then on the inside of the parentheses, you look at what's 3x divided by 3? It is x. What's 9 divided by 3? It is 3. So I have 3 times the quantity of x plus 3, and that's my answer. So we're basically going, doing the backwards of distributive property. And that's your answer, and that's what you have. So you circle it and move on. Number six, I have 12x plus 48. Now, I could um, write out the factoring for you, but I'm going to look at this and know it's 12, and I want to save you minutes of watching me talk. So my GCF is 12, and I take 12x divided by 12 is 1x, and 48 divided by 12 is 4. So I circle it, and that's my answer. Okay, here I have 12x plus 7y. So if you're looking at this, some of you may already know why. I don't know about any factors there, but if you're looking at it going, hmm, what are the factors? You might want to write it out and you go 12. It'd be 2 and 6, and 6 would be 2 and 3. And then you have 7y and nothing times 7 equal, or nothing times it another number equals 7 other than 1 and 7. So 7 is prime, and 7 is not a factor of 12, so this is not factorable. And you just write that on your paper, and then you circle it, and that's my answer. Okay, 8. The drawing of a garden has a total area of 15x plus 18 feet squared. Find the possible dimensions of the garden. So basically, this sounds really tricky, but what you're doing is you're finding um, the lengths of each. You're going to factor it. Um, if you look at this, if I have a garden, right, and I have one side is 3 and one side is 5, the area of that garden is 15 because I take this times this. And when we're um, factoring, we're finding factors that when multiplied together equal a bigger number. And so they've given us the area of the garden, but we are trying to find what would the side lengths be. So we, if we factor it, we have the dimensions of the garden or possible dimensions. So we find 15, we take 15 X and we find its factors, which are three and five and X. And then we take 18 and we find its factors, which are two and nine, which then become three and three. So then we highlight, what do we have in common? And we have in common a three and a three. So our GCF is three. So our GCF goes on the outside and then we have open parentheses. 15x divided by three would be five x. 
plus 18 divided by 3 would be 6. So our dimensions could possibly be 3 feet by 5x plus 6 feet. And I would accept it on the test like this. But this would be a very exceptional way of writing it. And that's it for factoring.